the order, the meeting of the board of selectmen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we will start as usual with public comment. If anyone has a comment. Stone Cleave Road. I just wanted to make a quick comment about Ms. Zinwright's presentation before the fact. I looked at her packet and I'm so impressed by all the progress that she's made. That project has been a long time in the making and it's going to be our newest and I think a, a really great trail for us which will tie the growing mill district to some of our other recreational activities. It's going to be a great thing and she's doing just a wonderful job. So I'm really happy to see all the progress that's being made there and look forward to being able to walk that trail in the near future. Great. You know what's amazing Thank you. about that trail? Because when you describe it, it's hard to envision. So how is this going to end up all the way over there? <laughs> so like I was flipping through the pages and you're like, okay, so, all right, let me follow it. Yeah, it was, it was sort of a, it was put together sort of like a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Pieces all fit together and finally made a trail. All right, thank you. Any other public comment? No, okay. First item is the approval of our minutes. We have our January 22nd executive session minutes. Can I motion approval of January 22nd open session minutes? Executive session, sorry. Executive session, I'm sorry. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. And now we have our February 11th minutes. Can nope. motion approval of the February 11th open session minutes? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Next item um, is our governmental report section. So we have quite a few updates um, this week. Uh, as Mr. Limpert alluded to, the first item is an update on the Mills to Hills Trail, which I um, actually asked uh, Megan and Jean to give us a brief update. I don't know if you guys read about this in your um, in the budget packet, but there was. Uh, progress, significant progress made on this and reflected in the budget and I was really excited to see it as well. So I wanted to just get an update for the public on this great project. Great. Thanks, Jean. Thank you, Stan. Um, so as Stan indicated, this project was uh, approved in 2014's town meeting through CPC funding. Um, I would say it's probably hit more roadblocks than I can count. Um, so in October, I picked it up trying to put a team together. So I've been working with the Department of um, Public Works, John Borgese and Curtis Johnson. Um, Jennifer Hughes has helped quite a bit from the conservation perspective, and we've been working with town council um, to get through some of the legal documents that will be necessary. So the trail, as indicated, it runs from the mills, essentially adjacent to Stachy's restaurant, um, joins up with the existing stone dust path that circles the pond today. We will add a stone dust jog off of that up to Walker Road. Um, again, one version of this had that path really running along the Kachiko Brook, which was problematic. We really couldn't permit it there. Um, so this is actually within the right-of-way of Walker Road, which is a private road. Um, it'll come off the paved area about three feet. It takes very little clearing. Um, it's really a, a wide open area today. A little bit of brush cutting as you approach the overpass to the high school. Um, I had heard some concern earlier on when this was brought before Walker Road that some residents may have had concerns. So we did hold a public meeting in November. Only two residents appeared at the hearing at the meeting, but um, they offered some good perspective. There's, there's going to be dogs walking on this trail, we imagine. So we're going to add some pestway stations, a barrel. Um, their, their primary concern was really about litter and rubbish. I would anticipate a lot of it was coming from McDonald's as kids either walk to or from school. Um, not a lot we could do about that. We're sensitive to it. Just adding a barrel along this path, I think, will help some of it. Um, so the meeting went well. Like I said, not very well attended. I did receive some calls, and you know, once I explained it, there was really no other concerns um, raised. Is the trail going to go through the high school? It's going to go over the overpass, and then once it comes off the overpass, rather than taking of the orientation, rather than going up towards the high school, it'll actually go to the back side of the fields. And again, that will be constructed. This was the one area that required some survey work and civil engineering. Um, so John Jay-Z really oversaw that process. It will require one area with some large stones um, laid, but it'll be a stone dust path. Same thing. I think it'll really provide 
the width of it, we're going to try to get up to six to eight feet if possible. Um, so a lot of the lacrosse or soccer teams that play on that outside field, a lot of the parents today stand on the outside of this. So we would anticipate they'll still be able to stand out there, but we'll make it wide enough that trail access will still be unimpeded. There won't be any issues with dogs because I know that on the school property there's yep. supposed to be dogs. So I listed here, um, <laughs> this went to the school committee back in I think 2014 and they voted their support with some conditions, one of which would be no pets on that section of the trail. Um, so there's no pets really on that whole property. So those are minor um, conditions about we'll do it at our cost, we'll maintain it and there'll be no pets and there'll be signage for that. The trail will come out along the baseball field and join up with the existing sidewalk to the Osgood Street. Um, once it hits Osgood Street, it will just go up Osgood Street about 10 feet. We'll have wayfinding signage to cross there and enter the trustees of reservations land. We've walked the site a couple times there. Um, it'll really hug the stone wall as you head up and almost loop back. And, and the reason for that is there are wetlands. There will need to be a bridge constructed to cross the stream there. Uh, very similar to a lot of the trails within Wire Hill and Miserenko Palm has a bridge similar. Um, once you come out, you'll be dead right across from the trail for Wire Hill, uh, adjacent to the parking lot. Um, it's unfortunate about the no pets because if folks want to walk, walk from downtown, yep. you know, to go to the to that area, they they yes. what are they going to do? Right? They can't. Yep. So the alternative for a little while would to. I guess head up 125 and cross through like Pleasant Street area and, and take the longer road on existing streets. Yeah. I agree. I, I have a pet. <laughs> will signage that indicate no pets, will there be signage at least at the overpass to indicate that if you have a pet? Yeah, so only we haven't developed the signage, but yeah, we'll have to give them notice before getting on that overpass and we would do it again, I think, on as you come off it. Yeah, because when they come off the overpass, they're on the school property, right? right. So it has to be before they even get onto it. I like it, the, the other thing it does, it sort of cleans up that area, of the school property. It's kind of, yeah, kind of why, you know, it's, yeah. it's not really wetlands there, but it's sort of overgrown. I think that'll, uh, I think that'll add to it. And certainly um, kind of making the area behind the diamond more functional because that's always kind of rain just out. better defined and yeah. and like you said more functional like we'll, we'll yeah. compact the stone dust to a certain spec yeah no it's so. it's and the other thing is i think for those folks that uh you know are are, are watching this a little bit this is the sort of things that uh, are coming out of our our master plan too there are opportunities like this all over our community and really now is the time we can start capitalizing on we see the priorities right yep definitely they, I, I will make a note on the trustees land that will be a man-made path so that will not be stone dust but similar to anybody that walks the man's trail from the common up across academy road and down to pleasant street um, it'll take a little bit of work to establish that section of the trail but um that's all in the plan okay. awesome great thank you so much okay. i'm really excited about this really excited about this project it was great great, great thank job you. thank you for thanks, 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 thank thanks you thanks uh, next item on our agenda is an update on the senior center. I know that yeah. Megan's out of town, so yeah. yeah. So she prepared a, um, an outline of where the senior center is at presently. Um, so the senior center is finalizing the schematic design um, with the architect. The, the schematic design is the first phase of the whole design of the, the, the whole um, project. The program for the interior of the building has been finalized and remains consistent with the approval of the town meeting, which is the 13.5 um, square feet with 80 parking spots. Um, multiple versions of the program and the elevation of proposed building have been reviewed and modified to meet the capital improvement plan. Um, the current program is moving forward, including the building of approximately 13.8 square feet with 80 associated parking spots, eight of which will be handicapped parking, which will be in the front of the, the actual building. Um, the program has is attached, which there was a schematic attached in your package showing the outline of the building, mm -hmm. um, and it is anticipated the schematic design in the, for the proposed senior center will be finalized um, for your March uh, 11th meeting to, to review and, and, um, and vote on. The town continues to work with MNCO to figure out the actual property um, site plan development and the, the actual property lines and the layout. So that we're, we're working with Suzanne and, and um, 
MNCO to get that finalized, which will accommodate the 136 units um, in the, the senior center building. Um, <clears throat> the following schematic design presentation to the board. Um, the architect will proceed with the development of the building and the site plan permit and the present present the project is slightly behind schedule, unfortunately, because of the delays as far as the the property lines and the layout and the schematics because it, we've gotten several different versions. So it's a, a little bit behind, but the project is expected to go out to bid by the end of this fiscal year and then go out for construction um, by the fall. Yeah. So there's still... You know, the time for it will come back to the board to make their comments and suggestions on the actual building and, and all of that. The one question that I have, because this is actually coming up and actually in, in, um, in residential properties, that the new openness makes it noisy. And particularly for a senior center, you want to make sure that they can hear really well. Has there been any discussion about, about the, the acoustics of all the open space or anything? With like inside, that? you mean, With the inside. building? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I haven't seen the actual layout for the inside. That would be something I could um, defer to, to Megan and get some further yeah, information just to for see you. How that they might, I don't know, um, could be rugs, it could be a whole bunch of things. Yeah, like I, I do know that you know there was rugs, many staff members involved in helping to plan the, the, the layout of the inside as well as looking at several other um, developments made by for senior centers in different communities. Okay. Um, I would just ask that we check to see yep. if they made any concerns or recommendations or on acoustics inside the building. But, okay. Um, because it is so nice and open, which is great, but again, sometimes that can have noise problems. Absolutely. So are you Jean, thinking do you that... you know on that? Do you do? Do you want to... Could you respond? So as part of this process, we did visit two other senior centers, mm -hmm. and I don't know the name of the material, but certainly in the multifamily, uh, multifamily, the multi-purpose room, mm -hmm. the ceiling and the the upper walls all have acoustical type material, you know, sound material. Okay, okay. And the fitness room as well, the floor and the ceiling. Because they might be um, yelling a lot in the fitness room. <laughs> <laughs> Either groaning or moaning. Kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, I would say the architect has definitely built that in, that he, he cautions us a lot of time about hearing impaired versus... Exactly. Um, yeah, just everything from chair rails, and like, he's he's always pointing yeah. to why we would want this type of detail. So we can get you more information yeah, on the you material itself. Yeah, just get us itself. a comment yeah. that that seems yeah. to be well taken care of. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's not just in public buildings. It, they're finding it because everyone wants open, open houses that yeah. they're living in houses that are quite loud now, so... Mm -hmm. um, um, so I can at the March 11th meeting, we'll provide that. Great. Yep. Thank you. In this schematic that we have in our packets, is the one on the left is obviously the first floor, and the one on the right, the, the top floor. But it, so it looks like the one on the left. And sorry, we don't have this projected, but I'm assuming that's like a, a two-story open space. That's why there's nothing above it. Right. So if you look at the fitness room, right, that will actually look down on the onto the multi room. Okay. So. So that's to your point. That's going to be a tall, open yeah. space room. So yeah. Yeah. the rest of them don't yeah. look as big. And as the consultant said, or the architect said, um, there are some people that are hearing impaired. And you know, we certainly want to make it enjoyable for everybody who works there and comes goes there. So great. Sounds like he's already on it. it we've right. definitely discussed it. Or she it, is but already he, on it. Yeah. Yeah. He, it's a he. And at the March 11th, we'll make sure he explains to you the provisions put in to the material. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. All right. Any other questions? Or we could probably get into more detail on this one when Megan's back. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, and now we'll move on to an update on the recreation Thank complex. Thank you. Dia's prepared something. Um, so I would like to publicly recognize Rick Green, who has been providing me with extremely comprehensive and very up-to-date um, notes on where the project is, as well as the meetings that I've attended. So Rick met with Waterfield Design Group last, uh, on February 14th to discuss some of the outstanding design issues. And out of that um, came a few results. The abettors had presented some concern about the lighting. So the planning board will have two site visits um, actually this week on um, Wednesday evening uh, at Merrimack College and then on Thursday evening at the Greater Lawrence Vocational School so they can look at the lighting and how the 
lighting is projected off of the field and the impact that it has on the surrounding area. So that was something that came out of the meetings with the abutters and so the planning board will have the opportunity to look at projects that this company has done to see how they've addressed concern from the abutters. Uh, the surveillance system, Waterfield is working with the police department as well as the town's vendor and that will continue as the design gets more solidified. They'll look at the different logical uh, locations for the different security issues. Um, one of the issues was the construction vehicles, so no construction vehicles will be allowed on the side streets. That was important to the abutters and that's something that was recognized um, by Waterfield in the town as something that's very important. The temporary staging area for the construction vehicles uh, is going to be relocated so there'll be no impact on the 4th of July fireworks. So that was something that came out of that meeting as well. And then the artificial turf, there was some question on that and Rick Gorman will be working with the school athletic director as well as Jim Mealy uh, to talk about the turf that was installed in the high school and you know whether or not that's the best you know material to use on, on this location as as well. Updates on the where this project is at with the Conservation Commission and the Planning Board. Uh, Waterfield submitted additional information for peer review um, and they closed out of all the comments. So Waterfield was in discussion with Jennifer Hughes, the conservation agent, and they've resolved all of the comments that she had on the proposal. Um, it's on the Conservation Commission's agenda for this Wednesday and Barring any additional comments or, or issues, we expect that the hearing will be closed at that time. And as I said, there are two site visits that will take place again this week. In terms of the fundraising, Rick has been in touch with um, an attorney and a CPA to discuss the relationship between the Herman Youth Center and their foundation and then this account and whether or not you know the accounting needs to be separated and how that would work functionally. And this will be presented to the board, um, the Herman board, for a vote at their March 6th meeting. So the fundraising effort is continuing. They are in discussions with uh, Richard Blaine and Associates on a fundraising scheme and how to meet those goals. And then once they have a uh, plan for the accounting mechanism, then they'll really launch into full steam ahead. And I listened to a podcast today that Rick Green and Terry Holland did, and it's really great. If you want the history of the project and, you know, really where it's been, where it's going, what's going to be involved in the project, what are the actual elements of the project, um, it's really something that you should listen to, and it's available on the town's website, the Youth and Rec Department. And then finally, um, Rick and Rick myself will be meeting uh, with Regina to look at creating a web page for the complex project that will have diagrams and questions and answers and a mechanism for people if they have questions to put those into the town to get some responses. This is such a large project, largest in the state as a matter of fact, so we want to make sure that the community is well aware of what's going on, the project, where it's at, and just the timeline for construction going forward. I just would add two things just to make everyone be aware. Um, the fact that we have not completed the planning board meetings yet means we're a little bit behind the schedule. If you were keeping track of whatever we said six months ago our schedule would be, we're a little bit behind schedule. So not that it's a huge deal, but I think this puts us one meeting past where we thought we would be. So just to make people aware in case we're... We've communicated out the schedule to folks over time. Um, I just like to make note when we're perhaps slipping from that. Um, and the other thing I would note, it, you mentioned the um, sort of new drive way for the construction vehicles so that they're not going onto um, the neighborhood streets. I just want to also point out they will not be going through the school drop-off area, <laughs> which is a big concern through the, um, the Atkinson Playground work that was done. So I just want to make people be aware that that will also avoid construction vehicles through the school drop-off areas. Um, and I don't know if anyone has any questions on that point, on, on that update, um, but I was going to suggest perhaps we could go out of order and talk about the other 
middle school fields, uh, our rec complex item on the agenda, which we have under new business. But since we're talking about it, I just assume move it up if everyone's fine with that. Okay. So under new business, um, we have a discussion regarding options for sponsorship, sponsorship and advertising. Um, so as Dee mentioned, we've got the um, fundraising group um, in place to do the, the private fundraising um, that needs to be done for a portion of the funds for the project. And obviously, as this group is going out to try and solicit donations, they need some guidance from us as to what they could give the sponsors um, as a way to recognize them for their contribution. So in your packet, you have a link to um, an email that Rick Green provided with some of the ideas that the group has thought of. And I don't think that we need, I wasn't planning on us voting on this tonight, but I was planning on us having a discussion and starting to talk about some of these ideas so we can be thinking about them, going off on our own and doing some research and seeing what these things might look like. And perhaps in our next meeting, voting on a set of things um, that we could allow them to use when they're going to talk to um, p possible donors, potential donors. Um, so I don't know if you guys have had a chance to look at that list and have some initial thoughts. Yeah, so I mean, this would be for folks who just in generally donate. This is, wouldn't be for people who want to consistently advertise at the field as a, as a consistent form of revenue, right? This would be more for people who have donated to, uh, to build the field and what, what mo will memorialize that donation. Right. This yeah. is if someone says, here's, you know, $20,000. Right. <laughs> so we want to give them something in, in, right. so that, in that's return. Right. So it's not no, like. No, they get something. We don't give them. They get, <laughs> they get the something. Value. Right. Of course. Yeah, so, so, it's so, not so you're like, better at this than me. <laughs> it's not an ongoing advertising right. No, it is not. It's a, no. it's a thing to. Right. Recognize yes. the, the contribution. Yeah. I mean, have we? Let me see if it's on here. Like a, a donor wall, mm -hmm. like with different levels of number three. Number three, a donor wall. There it is. <laughs> with, yeah. with different levels of um, like platinum, gold, silver, or whatever mm -hmm. uh, donations that that would memorialize how much was given and where they where they position on that wall. Um, and I like the pavers. I think pavers are. Are nice. With people like to go and you know, kind of look at the pavers and find their names on the pavers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that is generally gen, um, generational. Also, you know, people can go back and look at oh, right. there was my my grandmother's or my mother's or something like that. So I, I, I like that as well. Well, we did. You know, at the at Walsh Stadium, of course, we've got the the wall there with the mm -hmm. with the tile. So you know, I think there's there's a tradition already in our town that's tastefully done. So. Uh, and when you start to count up those tiles, like, wow, that's a lot of family. So um, I, I can see, a, I can see a, a lot of opportunities here. I guess conceptually, I look at this and go, I'm not sure that there's much we'd want to disqualify because the other part of this is you don't know what the proposals are in front of us. And I, I guess I would want uh, Rick and, and, and the folks that are doing this to really have um, this is like a search, you know. We, we ultimately can always say no, but let's say yes as much as we can to get the proposals in to see what's going, and then sort of filter through it. Mm -hmm. If you're willing to do the work, I mean, kind of giving you a broad uh, opening does put a little more on your shoulders. But I also think um, we want to. I'd love to see us to be as open as possible because sometimes you get some very creative uh, ideas that uh, may sort of traditional perspective, but ultimately what we're, what we're looking for is um, not just any old sponsor, but we really would love to have people that have some tie to this community, that there's a <clears throat> there's sort of a permanent legacy of their sponsoring this. It's not just, hey, we've got the money this year and let's just, just put it in. That's wonderful, but hopefully we can motivate some people to really think hard about being part of a, uh, an institution that we're now establishing. The only yeah, thing but is I we have to just be very, very sensitive to that when we started this project, and I'm sure Rick yep. can get into this, that to the neighbors, that it was not going to become commercialized. Mm -hmm. um, that's been from the very beginning. So in our effort to raise money, yep. we have to, and you didn't say that, so I'm not criticizing you, but I think to let people know who are watching that this, 
we did make a promise to the neighbors. We had many, many meetings, and we just mm -hmm. want to make sure that we make it a lovely park and not mm -hmm. an advertising place. But yeah. It, so how, how in detail, I, like I could see us going down, it looks like a dozen and a half rabbit holes, and I appreciate that Rick. Rick, put all this together. Good rabbit holes or bad rabbit holes? <laughs> well, I guess, like, I, I, well, I guess it depends. Yeah, we, I mean, I enjoy spending the night with you guys, um, so we can stay till midnight and probably tackle, like, two or... Th well, I guess I just want to understand the scope of what, what this discussion is. Are we talking about... Uh, like, Rick, uh, Rick and the committee need guidance from us. Do we have to... Do, do we feel at this meeting comfortable giving him any guidance or any idea of what that future meeting would... Like, I, I really could imagine us having several meetings... <laughs> About. I, I I guess I felt like, for me, there are certain things I really don't want to see there. And if we all know we don't want to see a certain thing there, it would be nice to let him know now. <laughs> so, so what are those? That, let's, so, let's, so what okay, are so that's, it, Yeah, Rick, please. Yeah. Give him a list of things that Again, the list you have in front of you is, is just some suggestions that through the, the public meetings we had, through Terry Hall and myself, Rosemary, I just put a culmination together, and at the time was to speak with Andrew Baylor about which way we wanted to go in terms of what what do we think is acceptable that we want to see in this facility other than big banners with advertising on it. So these are just some suggestions. It would be nice for us once we get into the actual fundraising to be able to have some guidelines as to what we can offer donors. And that might not necessarily be on the amount of their contributions, but what can we offer them? And we want to make sure it's as tasteful as, as possible. And like as Rosemary said, we did make a commitment to the uh, abutters and the residents of North Andover that these, any advertising we had would be, you know, not intrusive on the facility, but, you know, something we could recognize them for. And that's why you see, you don't see really anything that says banners or billboards like that. So that's, any gui guidance you can give us um, would be helpful. I'm not saying you have to approve anything on here, but guidance so that we can try to establish something as we move forward with the fundraising campaign. So since I, I said there are things I don't want to see, I'll, I will start. I personally don't think we should have signs with logos like on the fences or on banners or whatever, like logos painted on the field, paint, on signs on the fences, whatever. I like the idea more of natural mm -hmm. things that have a name etched in them. So a donor wall, a bench, a paver, you know, Ben benches along the walk, uh, signs in a picnic area. Yeah, we spoke about whatever like, Th those like kinds of things. Garden yeah, garden area sponsored yeah. by whoever. Whatever things like that are fine for me. Yep. But I just don't think we want to see like when you know banners on fall and dark goal posts. Yeah, yeah. Boards along multi-purpose court and, that, and that's, the company logo that's, on multi-purpose court. And that's in. That's in line with what we've talked to the neighbors about, that they would really be upset if there was a lot of advertisement that was, it's supposed to be a pretty place too, not. Right. I, I, I absolutely, absolutely <laughs> understand all that, but let's do a little bit of basic math. <laughs> let's say that, we'll just pick a number out of there. Let's say $600,000 needs to be generated through just these sort of sponsorships. At $20,000, that means you need 30 sponsorships, right? Um, getting 30 institutions, people, to say this little brick or that little piece in the walk represents your contribution. And, I, and again, I'm just throwing an ax at it. I, the little experience I've had with this, and it was years ago, and my experience in driving around seeing fields all throughout New England, um, I think that's a tall order to put on the table. And I agree with you in terms of trying to make it as tasteful as possible, but I think we also have to recognize that it is also a financial proposition to whoever is going to contribute. And again, when you break it down and you see how that's going to be manifested, I want to give you as much opportunity for that because obviously if uh, that 600,000, again, just grab a number out of the air, um, you can do that with 20 or 10. Um, Correct. It, 
is that more advantageous for us net net in many ways? So that's just a consideration here. That was always my concern. I, is it possible to agree with both? I don't want to see logos, but that was always the concern that I had with, with the daunting task before, before this committee. And you can't control that. We can have that right. discussion. I, what, what jumps to mind to me is we have the Adopt an Island program in town, and a lot of communities have that. And some communities actually have each sponsoring business's logo. They get to literally design their own sign on their sponsorship in North Andover has one where everybody gets the same font and the same writing and it has a classier look to it. Um, I mean I so I would I would shy away from logos. I also can think of businesses in town that are very generous and have been very generous have, that have changed their logos multiple times over the past several years and so that in of itself becomes a headache um, for them as much as it is for, for us. I mean nobody wants to look at an old logo. They most of all if they're a business that changes it. Um, I would be he eager to hear the feedback, but I would be inclined to say, let's shy away from the logos. Perhaps the banners are um, similar to Kyle Thomas, the signs around the outfield. Maybe that becomes a long-term fundraising option for the maintenance of the field, the same way that it is But uh, at Kyle Thomas, but I, I would rather not see logos. Mike, um, that was one of the things that we talked about not having. Kyle Thomas is a little bit different. It's been there since time in memoriam, but it also it backs up more towards the highway. This is really in the heart. It's been beautiful open space for years. I also worry a little bit too. There's so many schools in that immediate area that there's something uncomfortable about having that be a part of what they have to look at all the time. I think they get enough advertisement on TV and everything else. I agree with Regina. This is supposed to be and does and do the neighbors believe me they were very very strong about this in particular that you want it to be a, a, a beautiful place I mean here we are having wonderful trails and beautiful places that is natural and welcoming but I I have to strongly say that I would absolutely be against anything is big banners or placards or signs around the park um, and I think we would have trouble because I think the neighbors would really They'd be speaking out, um, but yeah. And with that said, I think I, mean, I like the first three papers, granite yeah. benches and donor yeah, wall. I mean, yes. I think those are very tasteful. I mean, even granite benches. You know, my first thinking, my first thoughts were, you know, we like to reserve those for for special people in town to to dedicate those to those people. But, you know, we there's also opportunities to have those as a sponsorship item and you know a good amount there to to get a granite bench with your name on it and you know maybe your you know someone who's passed away recently in your family and you want the memorial to them or something like that. I agree so, with you on that. So those are, I think those are all good and I, I do agree with my fellow members here about the. The, those who have stated it about the, the signs and the banners and everything, I think um, that may be uh, pushing it a little bit for... Uh, well, I think uh, once we reach or sign the agreement with, with Richard Blaine to actually start the fundraising campaign, we're going to meet with him again and I can get a better idea what he thinks would be good and I can come back to the board with a more solidified list as of what we would really like to do. This was just more of suggestions to throw things out to see what, you know, may be acceptable and what may not. So I can certainly come back to the board after we get it, reach an agreement with the, the consultant. Would it be uh, possible to have, take the feedback that you got from us, have him look at what you've put together and even consider other suggestions that maybe weren't on here? Yeah. And just with his experience, being able to just elaborate a little bit more, like flags on a flagpole, we might all be picturing things a little bit differently than, than what he sure. has in mind, and there might be actual existing examples that show it's not as commercialized as it appears. I mean, my, yeah. my gut reaction is no, but I, I don't want to, I don't think any of us want to stop you from an avenue of raising funds that, just because we it's not being explained correctly or we're all picturing things differently than the way that you could actually have it, where it could be done tastefully, or by our definition, I suppose, yeah. of tasteful. So that would be helpful. I mean, that's yeah, that's no problem. I really never got into discussion with the Rick Blaine yet about this list. This was generated back in, I think, November, just to get an idea from the town manager as to what he was looking at. So certainly once we sign the agreement with Richard Blaine, um, we'll speak with him and we'll get a more refined list that we can present to you for consideration. 
For okay. that reason, yeah. I would think we would want to delay a vote until we. Oh yeah, I wasn't planning. This was a okay. just. I had this okay. under new business for like a first discussion. So, just to give you feedback of how everyone's thinking, and then yeah, you yeah. can come back once you meet with, okay. with him and um, have Madam Chair. I think we should probably speak with Suzanne Town Council as well and find out if there's any issues with um, freedom of speech or anything yes. like that as to yeah. what we might be putting up. So, yeah. what, can, what, what can we do and what can't we do? Yeah, um, so we can ask for her opinion on that and, and yes, report right. back. <laughs> issues. Um, okay. Yeah, it's it's a very okay. powerful. A freedom of speech is might... hugely powerful. Yeah. Um, we don't want to be on the wrong That's side. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Yep. Hey, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for everything you've yeah. yeah. Thank you. Very exciting. Yeah. It is very exciting. A lot of work. <laughs> okay. Um, next up, we have an update on the Stevens estate. So I think, as everyone knows, we sent an RFP, an RFP out. Yep. And the responses were due February 13th. So yes. we have an update on that. Okay, so we, the RFP went out as scheduled, um, and we got the responses back on February 13th. There were actually 27 people that looked at the RFP, but we only got one response back. Um, so when we received the response, um, it was from Elegant Banquets, LLC. They're out of Connecticut, um, a Connecticut organization, which has um, five different event venues. If you were to Google them and look at them online, they're the event, the, the venues that they have are gorgeous. They know what they're doing. They've structured them. A lot of them are of the older buildings, like the Stevens Estate are. Um, the RFP had minimum requirements for the submittal, but it failed to submit the specific components of the RFP, so we, we declined the proposal. Um, Megan has been in contact with them and explained to them why we declined the proposal, but that we're going to go back out with a new RFP um, with some, some different specifics, and we expect that they will be responding as well. Um, when Megan gets back, she'll work with you know putting that together and getting it out and posted with, with Laurie. So we can get some um, some additional responses, and they'll be able to comply and respond to the RFP in detail, more so to the specifics. I think they're not accustomed to probably dealing with municipal RFPs and the requirements that um, they have to meet every criteria within there, or we can decline it. Mm -hmm. So um, this um, this company, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to look at any of their stuff, but they have. Um, they have actually done, taken like like an old J.P. Morgan um, estate and converted mm -hmm. it into a banquet um, place, and it's, it's beautifully done. I mean, beautifully done. So I think something like that would be really, really interesting for us, especially given what we heard in our last meeting with the budget and the, the situation of the Stevens estate really not being able to right. maintain itself with the maintenance it's going to need over time so that will be exciting i think the one kind of negative thing about this fact is that to do anything we're going to have to take this to town meeting right and we obviously will not make i don't think we'll make a town meeting i don't this think so. this town meeting if we're going to have to reissue the rfp wait for a new response and then mm -hmm. discuss because most likely this will either involve a long-term lease or at least dividing the lot that, conserving the land yeah. so on we're so going to do the restriction we remove the 40 island no. Um, the, the, the restriction will be on this town meeting. Though. The restriction will be yeah, as okay, far good. as I know. I'll double check with Suzanne, yeah. but we talked about Would, getting the restriction on so that that you know, okay, the main acreage that would be great. Would we That's need it. town meeting? Would it go to town meeting if we were to do a long-term lease for the? It will definitely. Okay. So, and from what I understand, um, the the company that had responded was aware of the, the timelines and things, and they're not concerned that it would be uh, okay. next That was my concern if they were like, oh, well, we don't want to wait yeah. a Such year. a huge project that would need all that time. Right. Yeah. Anyway. I would guess. So, yeah. sure. and I should know the answer to this, so. Um, so say we get a couple of proposals and they meet our conditions. Mm -hmm. It's still subject to town meeting. It doesn't mean we have to accept that, even though it meets the conditions. Usually. Right. It has to go to town meeting. It's still, no matter what, has to go to town meeting. Right. Well, okay. to, to decide what we want to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. usually we just go with the, the lowest bidder. Well, but this, in this particular case, it's a little stickier. <coughs> but I just don't want to well, feel as if we're committed um, 
Well, I don't think town meeting is, a, is the, the body that would actually pick the company that do, would do what we want with the, the facility. Right, We I would agree. pick the company and then we'd have to go to town meeting to propose the change in the lease if it's a lease okay. or sale. All right, you've just sort of reaffirmed what I was thinking. Yep. But, um, but we would not I be forced to pick. a question about the mechanism for that, though. Why? We exercise the right of first refusal all the time as selectmen. Why, maybe this, there's an obvious answer, why do we need town meetings approval for, for just in general, for a sale or lease? For a sale of a state? property, municipal yeah. property? Yeah. I don't know the specific um, mass general law, but it is required that town meeting vote if we're going to sell a piece of property. If you remember the Brad a Street piece of School, land. a piece of land or, prop, or building, um, okay. either or. I mean, we do have to go to town meeting to get their approval to sell the property. Okay. Which makes sense. We have to... Well, not for town meeting. Oh, but yes, I'm going to change the zoning. The, the, the zoning, I would see, but more just because you said specifically about the lease or sale. Well, for, well, for the press street, I don't think we, we had custodial rights of that, but we were able to sell that. But did we already have the vote ahead of time? I, I, like you, I'm sort of a little far. Yeah, we did. Right? I, I believe we did. Maybe we would um, I believe we did. town attorney on what, um, what, what our what the obligations process is. are, yeah. what the process is. Because mm -hmm. we, I mean, we as a board vote all the time to put vehicles, so not land property or building property, but certainly town property up for auction all the time. So it's town property. Right. So that's, that's, I was. Right. I, yeah, it's a little confusing. My angle yeah. is only just to understand it and right. understand why, why it's town meeting that exercises that right and not just the board as um, we do in other property cases. Well, it depends on what type, when you're saying the sale of property, you mean like when we sell surplus property and things like that? Well, that's a, like so we, vehicles we put a vehicle or ass, small assets like that's, that. That's not a. That's, that's a foreclosed pro property. Are you referring to? No. No, I'm just any. I mean, anything the town owns. So okay. is, is there a yep. distinction real, for land? She's talking about real property. I'm talking about real, real property. property, right? Okay. Yeah. So just just a, a backup question for a second. So there were 27 people, institutions that, that looked at it. Looked right? at it. Yeah. Do we know who they were? Um, Megan would know who they were. So. It might be interesting, uh, you know, it's got a little little project to find out from maybe sample them. You looked at it. Why did you take no action? What did you see? What? what well, they did didn't respond. They looked at it. They didn't respond. Still, it's why it's a good. Why they didn't? Why you didn't? I mean, um, it, it might be an interesting. I could speculate that some of them were contractors and they wanted to develop it up there. Or restaurant owners, yeah. it could have been things like that. You, that you, didn't meet the RFP. Okay. You had to register in order to see the RFP. Okay. So it, was just a it wasn't just available for okay. you to click right. on and look and see what it was. So well, yeah, I I'm just there trying to find a few that were a good, a curiosity. Good point. I mean, uh, we certainly right. would reach out to them again. If you well, had I mean, if I, I guess I look at go, you know, if, if we only got one actual proposal, that yep. means something, something in the messaging either didn't come out or wasn't received. And so for the folks that actually got the message but didn't respond to it, that's a great opportunity. You know, learning from failure, it, maybe a little exaggerated, but, you know, right. learning from that experience, um, you know, it's a, I guess it's an opportunity to be able to maybe craft the next version that's maybe a little more targeted. Uh, we, we requested a lot of financial information in this RFP, and right. the one that responded didn't answer that information. So when I was talking with Megan, we were saying, Maybe some of the others didn't respond because they didn't want to deal with providing that information, which is why we. Right. There was also a cost involved in providing, yeah. like in the thousands of dollars. Okay. And they had to provide the also a deposit to us. So I think that some people who probably looked at it did not want to front those mm -hmm. costs. Right. Um, that's, yep. that's nice to know because and the message... And it will go out. I mean, we will yep. reach out to the 27 people that awesome. pulled it originally to yep. let, yep. or companies, to let them know that it's being reissued mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that they can, you know. We, we, we do think one company would have responded had it been different timing mm -hmm. um, as far as getting all the paperwork together, so... Good. Because, I, I, gosh darn it, I think it's worth more than one person, one mm. group responding out of 27. Yeah. Right. And that's, you've certainly put a lot more light on that. And I think that, that gives it an added perspective. So I, I appreciate that. Well, in fairness to everybody, it's just so unusual. Okay. 
right. a community like ours is considering selling this big, beautiful building. But, I mean, we bought it. I mean, I'm sure, Dickie, you remember, and, and others, we bought that estate to protect the water supply and other things. Um, and sort of just with it came this beautiful building. So. Um, so the, the conservation restriction, though, is already planned to be on oh, yeah, the town meeting be. warrant, right? Yeah, that was the that was the purpose as to what we. It's amazing. It should have really gone on. I mean, yeah. Why? Why, why did it, it go so on? It, yeah. It was supposed to be done the next year, and yeah. it just yeah. never happened to the next town meeting. Cracks, right? yeah. It did, but no one was in a big hurry to to pollute the water supply. You know. Uh, so who's crafting that warrant article? Okay. Um, all right. Well, I look forward to seeing what the what the responses are. I'm kind of disappointed that we're not going to get to probably right. so have it by this town meeting. But well, if it's something really time sensitive, there's always a possibility of having a special town meeting. Mm -hmm. We don't like to do that because it's yeah. expensive and you don't get the full. Yeah, yeah we no, I don't. Stay away from yeah. Yeah. special town meeting. Yeah, we really, really, <laughs> really actually Definitely. Do, yeah. Sometimes the opportunity presents itself, and then you can throw it on the agenda, but yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say. Yeah, no. Can we, can we get the real piece of the general law that that says yep, where I'll, we need I'll to have, have that? Because, like, even right now, just a simple search shows that Section 40, Chapter 40, Section 3 of Mass General Law says that it's up to the Board of Selectmen when it comes to leasing. Like, it depends what we want to do. If mm -hmm. Our goal is to lease the land for 30 years. It makes no mention that we need the authority of town meeting to do that. Okay. So, so it lit, I mean, it's yeah. so pretty clear that it says, yeah. so, but I don't know, I mean, this is me doing a... Quick search, right? Yeah, to, I mean, but there's no, man, no mention of if we're leasing land that we need town meeting's approval to do that. Okay, but if he's selling it, I think I mean, in fairness, I haven't made it that far in the, in the general law. Okay. But I mean, just that, I mean, it's, it would be helpful to understand why it is with that property. I will. I'll talk to Suzanne in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else on that? Okay, we can move into consent items. We have a letter of support for the MSBA application. I think this has to be read exactly. So, Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion consistent with what we've done. I think this is our third time as a board voting for that, uh, or considering this item where um, I would recommend that the, so bear with me, colleagues, as I have to read this word for word. I know. I move Boy, that I the Board of Selectmen authorize the, the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority a statement of interest that will be submitted to the MSBA by no later than Friday, April 12th, 2019, for consideration in 2019 for the North Andover Middle School located at 4. 95 Main Street, North Andover, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which the Town of North Andover may be invited to apply to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future for priority number two, elimination of existing severe overcrowding as determined in the judgment of the authority, specifically to decrease class sizes from a current average of 24.6 students, and for priority number seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements. Specifically replacement of our antiquated science labs and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority or commits the, the town of North, uh, the city, town, regional school district to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. In addition, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of North Andover confirms the following criteria applied to the request. The school facility has been and will remain in use as a public K-12 through school, serving public school students for the useful life of any additions slash new construction. The school facility has sufficient spaces to deliver its required educational programs, except for the lack of space to allow for the decrease of existing class sizes. The school facility is structurally, functionally, and educationally sound and has no other deficiencies and all other building systems are operational, safe and adequate for the delivery of the required educational programs. The need for additional space is not the result of neglect or the lack of routine or capital maintenance by the district. The district acknowledges and agrees to abide by all federal and state law and rules, regulations, policies, and guidelines of the MSBA, and the district agrees to use the MSBA's pre-qualified OPMs and designers. The district has the ability to raise the local contribution required to fund the district's share of the project in a timely manner, and the district has no entitlement to funds in the awarding of a, gr of a grant. 
if any, is at the sole discretion of the MSBA. Second. <laughs> <laughs> any further discussion? We've done this already as... This is at least our third time. Yeah, third time's exactly. Charm. So, Hopefully. third time's a charm. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, the next item on our agenda is a request from the Poet Laureate Committee. Um, you have a letter or an, uh, an email in your packets from Gail Henney, who is the chair of the committee, who requested that we lift the provision that the residency is required to be on the Poet Laureate Committee, and she would like to allow those who live in the Merrimack Valley to be on the committee. I think the two important points is this is a committee that selects the Poet Laureate, yeah. and it's because one of the committee members is moving out of town but still has that interest to stay involved, right? And, and as a community, it's not a terribly large one. And so, Madam Chair, I motion that we move that the Board of Selectmen allow residents of the Merrimack Valley to be appointed to the Poet Laureate Committee. I actually think at the very beginning, we did have someone who was from out of town. I mean, many, many years ago. My, bef before we move on, um, I would still insist, though, that they must be a resident. The Poet Laureate should be a resident of North Andover. The committee is fine, but I think who they choose, that's why it was set up. We set up to have a North Andover Poet Laureate. My motion is only for the committee. So okay. if can I make a friendly amendment to that motion? Can we say that the committee can, can be comprised of one member that is not uh, mm -hmm. from North Andover and uh, the Merrimack Valley so that we don't end up with a committee that's totally... We appoint outside. the committee members and select them, and so... Uh, yeah. Just throwing that out there. I, I would make another amendment to say that it should only be after we seek to fill the position with someone from North Andover. I mean, why should a seat be filled by someone who's we, not living in town we if are, someone living in town wants to be on this committee? We have the appointing authority, and so if we, if, if somebody applied and they made it through the appointment subcommittee and came to us, I mean, why, we don't have to tie our hands. Um, this isn't, we're not losing any authority at all. It's just so that we could consider applicants who are not from North Andover. And in the event that, let's say, there were two people and we want, really wanted to appoint that second person, we would then have to go through this exercise again to amend the bylaws when, so again, it's ultimately up to us. So what you're saying is you open it up? We're, we're giving ourselves the five hours flexibility. A little flexibility. bit of latitude. I still think we should say, sorry, that it should not be all. Mm -hmm external to North Andover. I mean, I think if we're changing, uh, is this in a bylaw? I don't even know where this is codified, that this is a requirement. I mean, <laughs> it's just created, it's just our, yeah, uh, well, a long time ago. Just through, okay. yeah. yeah, I think I was on that committee when they decreed I mean, we, it. I'm just saying that for the sake of simplicity, it's our authority no matter what. So we can always, hypothetically down the road, just vote again to change it. Like the whole reason we're doing this in the first place or that it's been requested is because a resident has asked and we've determined that their value, even though they're leaving, is of such that we should amend. And we could always amend moving forward, or we could just give ourselves the flexibility now and just not ever advance a person if that was going to create a committee like that. We actually interviewed someone who yeah. wanted to be on this committee but said that they were moving, and we said, well, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's in just a North Andover committee. So I, I almost and wonder if I mean, they should have an associate member. Well, right now this yeah. committee is half full. There's eight seats on the committee, there's only four seats to the fall. So oh, that's dear. something to take into account, too. You, ba you basically have a, a majority vote, very, pretty tight on the majority vote. I, 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 I understand. I, I, I agree with, with, uh, with the chair that trying to make sure that all the slots are filled first by folks from North Andover is really, really important. I also see certainly that the concept of, you know, the Merrimack Valley is appealing. Um, you know, I guess I'd look at it and go, let's start with one and see how it goes. I, I, how It's just our time to come back and, and make the change. And I, and I think we've already shown in the past year that if there's a compelling situation on, on these committees, we accommodate it. Uh, you, because we want to have those people serve. So if, if, I think if somebody comes to us in the future and says, makes that compelling case, I'm not a resident here, but I really want to serve, and we've got that opening, then make the compelling case. I, I, I'd certainly be open to that in the future. So you're arguing 
in favor? Because then I'm in, I'm in, in favor, favor of the two friendly amendments. Well, I'm going to actually amend my I, friendly amendment. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> not, to, not to be funny, but I mean, given <laughs> now looking at the makeup of the board, I would be willing to let it up to two members of the Merrimack Valley, uh, because I think that okay. keeps it, you know, it doesn't make it a, um, a majority in any way, yeah. um, and it because we have. Obviously, half this board is vacant. I think um, you know it just opens up to additional folks to be able to give their input. So I would be <coughs> willing to say two. <coughs> so I'll change my friendly amendment to um, up to, um, a maximum of two seats would be filled from could be filled from people outside of North Andover. So we'll say outside of North Andover, not Merrimack Valley, because I seem to recall the one. Well, that what we is exactly Merrimack the, Valley? The that we what is Merrimack Valley? Valley is, is I, I would accept that. Lowell. I don't think you. Oh, yeah, she was not moving the to Lowell. Lowell I think. Yeah, it wasn't I will, that far. Well, Lowell would have a, ma a real problem with that statement, but I think that that is a lot of definition. No, it really is the Merrimack Valley. Lowell is, oh, Lowell is <coughs> absolutely <coughs> the Merrimack <coughs> Valley. Yeah. They would. What's the difference? <laughs> Merrimack Valley or whatever? If somebody from New Hampshire will, wants to. Uh, I will uh, second. Uh, I will second Mr. Valencourt's amendment to um, no more than two members. No more than two members be made up. No more than two members be from outside the town of North Andover. The only thing that I want to add to this is does not mean that they can choose <laughs> the Port Laureate, who's not a resident of North Andover, not to assume that this opens We're simply doing the composition of the committee. It's just about the yeah. committee. Okay. I'm, again, the selection I'm making the it clear that committee. that doesn't mean that... Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Uh, Second, I guess, at this or point, are we, we got second, it, everybody got it. Second to the friendly <laughs> amendment. Where are we, what are you saying? My amendment? Your amendment, your amendment of the amendment that says two non-North Andover residents, may, up to two, may serve on this committee. We're not limiting the geographic area. Uh, right, that's where we are. Everybody got that? A woman, you're not limiting it to the Merrimack Valley? I don't know that that really makes sense. Well, you know, we, Parts of the Merrimack Valley are a lot further away than they, they, Salem, New Hampshire. They, so they are it's just New Hampshire, you're right. uh, so I guess I would make the case if somebody really likes this community and wants to support it. Um, again, ultimately, it's the appointment subcommittee that's going to choose the individual. So it's it's well, it is on the board. On the board, right? Well, well that's but right. they're the recommendation kind of coming up. So. guys got the application we actually do have somebody that's from out of state that's an employee that had applied an employee, an employee. At, yeah that's of the library oh. yeah oh I think so. yeah so I mean hmm. there there is some interest for somebody that does not live in Massachusetts so you're saying that there could be two hmm. people Already. Well, if you, I'm just saying, if you were limiting it to Merrimack Valley, you, yeah. that person oh, would not right. That's what I'm saying. That's the point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Merrimack Valley does extend into the Hampshire. I mean, what's, 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 what's the point of limiting it to Merrimack Valley? What's the point of? We're going to let someone else in. That's not. I know. There's really no. Let's just say that it can be somebody that doesn't. Limit. I mean, it's at our discretion, that's... anyways. We are the appointing authority, right. no matter what. Right. We Ultimate. can do it on a case-by-case -case basis. We don't need to restrict ourselves. Like we don't, we can always change this if we always felt like it was well, uncomfortable. I think, I think one of the reasons that this has come up that there are not all communities have a poet laureate, and those who are interested in the English language and poetry, this is pretty exciting for them. I mean, we do have a lot. I know Karen Klein has told us a million times that we have a lot of well-esteemed um, poets from the Merrimack Valley and a little bit beyond that. Uh, we are known. We are the Valley of the Poets. Yes, thank you. Um, so I and we could have someone who's actually just a professor at Merrimack College or the University of Lowell. Um, then you've also got Cambridge College. I mean, they could be. And for for them in that world, I would suggest it's pretty exciting stuff to be doing this. But um, so I guess I would. I would agree that if we're going to go beyond, there's no reason not to go beyond the Merrimack Valley. They could work here, like, yeah. like Laurie said. Um, I would not want to go more than two. Um, I think that's plenty yeah. to start off with. And so we have a motion that's been amended and seconded to say that we will allow two, up to two, non-North Andover residents on the Poet Laureate Committee, correct? Yes. Made, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Okay, motion passes unanimously. <laughs> that was more of a discussion than I thought. <laughs> Who knew we were going to have a meeting so, discussion? A lot of great Ms. Burzloff, we voted on the the <laughs> amended motion. Do we have to now vote for the full motion, or do you is that comfortable? I think you're good. I think we're good. <laughs> we, we all know what, we, we, all know what we were voting on. Tribune tomorrow, Paul. Right. <laughs> People are just be uh, okay. to the newsstands to pick that one up. <laughs> <laughs> the next item is to vote to appoint a chair of our town manager search committee that we voted on in our two meetings ago, I guess. Um, we heard from the different search firms that they they suggested that we nominate or appoint a chair mm -hmm. so I put this on our agenda so I guess my question is why would we do it I mean normally mm -hmm. any committee or board that I've been on or even you know when you get into these team building exercises the first thing you do is you you nominate and elect a chair from within why um, I, was I, I guess surprised by it as well. Same yeah. Reason. Yeah. why would we want to <clears throat> designate or dictate who would be the chair I mean, for that board um, I put it because when I heard the search committees suggest that we do it, I don't remember which one of them, but I thought more than one of them, the search companies suggested that we do it. And then I also was reading online about the process that a few other towns followed. And now I, of course, can't remember because I was actually I was planning to put this two meetings ago. So it's been a while since I prepared for this item. I don't know if it was Hamilton. There was another town that I was reading, and they, they did it. So anyway, there was some precedent, it seemed to me, of having done it. Um, so well, I don't I know. I mean, I'm fine takes, with them. It takes the awkwardness out of that board, too, to, to, to have yeah. to you know, nominate somebody. And, 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 but I mean, that's also, well, it also I guess, part of the forming of a committee, though. Is, yeah, it, it also gives, I guess, a person to start facilitating from the get-go so we can give one name to... MRI to start so that they planning meetings so that the they meeting who to call and yeah like who's calling the meeting yeah. yeah to call the first meeting I mean if we think that they would want to we know I, well I talked to my appointee to see if he was interested I don't know if anyone else seeing this on the agenda talk to your appointees to see if they are interested I'd yeah. be comfortable with their appointee um, but my appointee is interested so. Yeah. So I don't know, but if nobody else spoke with well, theirs, I don't know if they're. Well, no, I spoke with mine, and he, he is also just in. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. it's, um, but it's not something I think that he would, you know, be adamant about. I mean, he has qualifications and experience in chairing other committees and mm -hmm. towns, and that's one. I think that would be so, and that's somewhat the important um, and, that they yeah. should have experience mm -hmm. doing this. Right, right, and that's so, the challenge. I've got the same same scenario. So. I think we've got two, we've got three people that are possible. I, I would just assume they sort that out yeah. among among themselves because um, we want to get the maximum out of it. And I think there are a lot of reasons to try and appoint, but I just think the dynamics are really, really critical here. And I'm very confident, looking at who we've all designated, that we've got great folks, but you don't know who's who really will emerge as the best leader of that group as they see it. Yeah, I mean, I, if if we have three interested parties, I think one of us could, I could, or D could try and you know, facilitate getting the first meeting called, I guess. Um, I don't know, can we do that? How, how would we do, if there's no chair, how would the first meeting get called? I'm gonna, and also throw this out, this is our search committee, I mean, if we want to assess I don't know if that creates an awkwardness. I would rather us talk about just designating this person as chair because it's not a permanent committee rather than they're not going to be able to assess each other's strengths because they have to determine this in their first meeting. Mm -hmm. So this, sure. I, I, I appreciate the, the premise, mm -hmm. but it's not, yeah. I mean, we're asking five, in theory, strangers, but I don't think they're strangers because no. I think they've all worked together on different projects and for different mm -hmm. reasons. Some of them actually sit together on committees right now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would, know, I would have no problem designating a chair and just that way we know who that person's supposed to be. I mean, every single one, I mean, every single one of these people have been chair of some group in town. Several of them act as, I mean, Holly Lynch is the chair of our school committee. Lou Napoli is the chair of our conservation commission. Mark Rogers chaired our finance committee at one point. Denovan O'Connell ran political work for the governor of Rhode Island um, with appointments. I mean, Terry, we don't have enough time to list all the things he's chaired. Um, yeah, so. certainly they're all capable of doing it. I just want to make sure that they hit the ground running. So I have, yeah. if it makes life easier, I mean, and we've done that before with other committees, even with 
but I mean, the OPEP committee being one that jumps to mind as most recently where we did it. So I'm, I have no problem identifying somebody and just moving forward with it. I did not talk to my, I'm just glad that my appointee chose to serve given that she's chair of the school committee. So <laughs> I did not ask if she wanted to chair this committee as well, but um, I mean, it's basically just them facilitating yeah, meetings. I guess given that argument, you're right. Any one of, uh, any one of these five people could very well do the job. So. They all already do it for us in different ways. So yeah. I don't think it's a slight against any one of them because all five of them are doing it with, anyways. With Holly in particular, though, with the law degree, I mean, I have not heard back from my person, um, from Terry, but I think that Holly with the law degree and experience being a chair would, would probably be a, a good fit for this. Um, I also think that uh, Louis Napoli, who has chaired conservation for a quite a few years, not just one term, several several times is also would be very good at it. Um, all, I, I truly believe that's why we picked these. Right. All five are, all five would be right. amazing. We just, I want to be cognizant of why, why this is on here. I think it's because we want to help facilitate the search as quickly as possible and identify someone yeah. who can just help, help lead it. Um, right. Madam so. Chair, if I may, I would recommend since this is the board's committee that you do appoint the chair. Um, just in the sake of, of time, we really need to get moving as quickly as possible. Um, and uh, I think it, it should be the board's decision and, and appoint that person and then I will work with that person moving forward to set meetings and to get us on track. And now this is the same, the way that works is that like with our board, it's just the the point person among five equal members, they're all going to be getting the same information. We made that clear to the consultant that they would all be included no matter That's what, correct. as long as they're not breaking the law when it comes to open meeting. I just want to make sure that we identify that clear person and not waste a whole meeting on yeah. discussing, well, like we've discussed right now, of who should be chair of this committee. And in this case, I think they're all familiar with each other, but I don't know. Correct. The function of the chair would be to call the meeting, you know, go into executive session, kind of be the the, uh, administrator, the administrator of, of the group. But again, five members, five equal chair, and they will get all the same information. My concern, my, my concern about Holly, and not I, I think she's great. I'm worried it's a lot if she's the chair of the school committee also to be the chair of this committee. But I've spoken and to her at her. length about, about all of this. I was thrilled that she could serve despite that responsibility. I'm not, I, I would think that if there's one person in this world who could juggle all of this, it is her. Um, well, I agree. But I, I didn't mean to say concern. But that That's being the wrong said, word. She, she didn't express an interest to me on this, and we never discussed the idea of her chairing. Um, so I did have a conversation with your appointee, and he had said that he'd be willing to do it as well, and that was the only person that I had a conversation with. So. That's why I have no, I'm yeah. the only one person expressed an interest to me. And that was the conversation he initiated. And so. I, I actually did speak to your person too as well, and he seemed to have interest. So I would, in that case, I would move uh, Louis Napoli because he's been, has lots of experience being a chair. Um, yeah, Madam yeah, Chair. He's not going to be in yes. town though for the first month of the project. I don't know if that's. Yeah, we've had. Going to be the best. He and I have had some conversations. Lou's had. I've had some conversations with Lou as well. Yeah. Um, he will be you know, obviously available to electronic media. Uh, he'll be right. out of town and during the application process. So you know, we're thinking there's a 30-day process for applicant for the applicants to submit their materials. So that's pretty much going to take us through the month of March, right? So he'll be back in April. Um, but if there are, you're right. If there are any. A board meetings or, or search committee meetings in March to then yes he would be uh, yeah I mean I feel like we're gonna I mean the first thing is going to be the compilation of the profile the town pro, the the profile and the requirements and the meetings with the department heads and the meetings there's gonna be meetings with search committee and us to do that profile and that's gonna start let's say next week we're meeting with MRI later this week yes to get them started, so at least the search committee is going to be meeting next week, as an example. So I feel like it's important for, for the, the chair to be yeah. here yeah. for that. No, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, even though I'm sure he would be great, I just that's yeah, my no, only concern no, that's a, that's a about uh, about that. 
Yeah, we haven't really published a clear timeline. I know. Right we're, we're hopefully we'll get a clear yes. timeline. So we're D and I are meeting with case, MRI on Thursday. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. That the chair should be a, available and in present. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's a problem if the material is communicated online and it, or through right. phone and interviews of that such. But yeah, if there's yeah. going to be a, an actual committee meeting, then yeah, the chair should be here. Well, so I guess I, I guess I would. Uh, it's hard to. <laughs> you, you just don't want to. I, I, lobbying, it's not not quite right. We're trying to have no. a very collegial discussion here, and it's hard because of the qualities. But um, the reason why I, I I I would consider Mark Rogers is, you know, he was on Dr. Price's search committee. He's chaired the finance committee. The guy works in HR. And um, it, it, just sort of that ability to, to be able to hit the ground running with what the mission is of this. And stop somebody from speaking inappropriately with HR. Well, I, all, all that, but, but on top of it, just sort of, you know, what do we want the chair here to do? We want the chair to kind of get through the mission most efficiently. And, and to really maximize expertise of the group. And that's sort of why I thought Mark would be, uh, you know, a good candidate for that. But, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. So I, I want to say this. Yes. I, we have appointed many of these people to boards. Yes. I don't think that this is a, a vote of reflection on the code, how, how any of these people work. Because right, again, right, exactly. we have the chair of our school committee, the chair of our Absolutely. conservation commission, former chair of finance committee, vice chair right. of CPC. Yeah. Yeah. Like, these are not, these oh, are literally yeah, right. not it's an very issue of qualification. Right. Um, I, I think, first though, Rosemary, you have a, a motion on the floor. You may need to either withdraw it or. Yeah, if he's not going to be available. Um, I, um, but I would, I would second. Chris's motion. I think he really has a few more qualities than. So you withdrew your motion then? I am. Well, okay. when you was, when you said that we're not sure yeah, the schedule, said. that would just would, didn't make sense, and I was okay. unaware of that. Um, and I think my candidate would be great too, but I I yeah, haven't I, I haven't heard back from him. So um, I would second your motion. I think he really seems to have a few more checks um, to. Um, Qualify. All right. You didn't make a motion, but I'm assuming it. Yeah, you're I, I, a I, I moved uh, <laughs> oh, a I'm motion sorry. that. Well, no, we were we were there. We sort of okay. uh, move uh, that we appoint Mark Rogers as chair of the um, town manager search committee. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Does he want to be chair? Yeah. Does yeah. He want to okay. Be? Oh, absolutely. He. Communicated that. I don't yes. know. That. Okay, that's because oh, yeah. that was assumed that my appointee wanted to be, and she hadn't communicated that <laughs> at all. So, um. and I think maybe mine would too. But then again, he might. You know, if, what people don't realize is power sometimes not being the chair because you get to make the motion. So, it's mm -hmm. it's sort of a, a balance of. It's just they they, ha they have to be the ones that are available. That's that's mm -hmm. my. Mm -hmm. Point. So that's why I'm, I mm -hmm. wanted to be clear that he expressed it because I didn't want to volunteer somebody who wasn't going to be. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Give me a second while I get back into the agenda. Um. Next, we have the, to vote on the charge for the town manager search committee. So in your packet, you have a document that Dee worked on um, that describes the role of the search committee. I guess everyone had a chance to read it. I, don't, I can summarize it if, if you want. Um, the search committee's work shall include meeting with the town's recruitment consultant to discuss questions regarding the position profile, re review process, the process of interviews, discuss questions as prepared by the recruitment consultant and possible additional questions, and set the interview dates. They will receive and review resumes of all semifinalists as presented by the recruitment consultant and the search committee shall receive all resumes and add to the list of semifinalists if they deem appropriate. So that's an addition that we, you know, making very clear that they will see all resumes if they, um, and 
have free reign to add to the semifinalists. Conduct interviews of selected candidates utilizing established questions. Compare the experience, qualifications, and interview performance of candidates to identify up to five finalists for reference and background checks by the recruitment consultant. Meet with the recruitment consultant to review the outcome of the reference and background checks and take a vote to present an unranked list of the chosen candidates to the Board of Selectmen. And the chairperson will meet with the Board of Selectmen to present the names and resumes of the finalists. There's some other language there, but I don't feel the need to read the entire document. I assume you all read it. Um, any comments or further? I, I, it comments. gives them a clear enough charge and uh, still open enough to uh, to yeah, make some, yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, well put together. Yeah, Thank you. Move the board of selectmen accept the charge of the town manager search committee as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right. Uh, next item is the warrant for the town election. Um, do we have to make a motion to accept this warrant, or do we? Uh, we, have yeah. to, we have to make a motion. Yeah. Um, so we don't have the town clerk here. I assume it's a foregone. Ha, it's a foregone conclusion. <laughs> done, done. Um, Madam Chair, I move that the board of selectmen approve and sign the warrant for the March 26, 2019 town election. I'll second that. All right. it's, well, it's uncontested. You're looking at me like it, it was. The joke made sense. <laughs> the joke made sense. And just to, just to reiterate, when the, the warrant states that the election will be held on Tuesday, the 26th of March, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., um, and there is one selectman and one school committee member on the ballot, and that's it. Okay, we had a mo we had a uh, motion and a second. Do we have a second? I think we did. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Ready to move into licensing. Yeah. Manager, motion, motion to move into licensing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're in licensing. We've just got uh, one item to consider, and then I'll comment on the second one. The first is a uh, two one-day liquor license applications on behalf of Merrimack College. Uh, two events that are to be held on the 30th. And in our packet, we have uh, recommendations from the police and fire department and building inspector with a couple of conditions. Uh, and those conditions are, are spelled out uh, very clearly just in terms of uh, access points. And again, just all ties to uh, what uh, we'll be putting together uh, in a more formal package permanently uh, when we move to the uh, shifting of the license. But um, I think it's Again, standard request from Merrimack. Any questions as folks have uh, reviewed it? I'll, no I'll <laughs> accept any motions on this. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then the other item that uh, we were going to cover tonight was um, a discussion relating to an incident at the uh, Hikato restaurant and on the advice of town council and of our police the licensing commission uh, will continue any inquiry or hearings uh, on this uh, incident that occurred on february 16th 2019 until uh, criminal charges um, resulting from it have been resolved so uh, we're just going to continue this until we hear further from town council and and our, our so, a motion to table it. To we speak. just we just continue it. There's really nothing. Nothing for us to take action on, at I mean, this point. Okay. It was just really kind of make you aware of what was going on, but um, we're not even going to proceed with that yet because there's still more information that needs to be gathered and, and to determine before it can really be brought in front of us. It has to do with really criminal um, components of this that are being addressed. Well, then, then we better do what we're supposed to because that I, could be I would bad. take take the advice of town council yeah. and our police chief. That's, that's pretty yeah. fair. Uh, so with that, I'll just hear a motion to uh, motion to move out of license. Move out of license. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, now, under old business, I have the FY20 budget um, for discussion. I put this here because when we reviewed the budget and voted to send it to the finance committee, it was 11 p.m. 
<laughs> so we didn't have a lengthy discussion, obviously, given that hour. So I wanted to put it back on the agenda to have a bit of time to discuss any items. I know. Um, um, Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, it's corrected in the online version and such. Um, so, if we want to, I'll just open it up if anyone has any comments or questions on the budget. I have a number of things, but I, <laughs> I will. Let I guess I wasn't sure first. why it was put back on the agenda because I thought oh, I'm sorry. It, I thought we had sent it to the finance committee for review mm -hmm. and and yeah. so I wasn't quite sure why it was back on. Um, okay. Um, sorry for that. I should have given you guys a an update as to why I put it on there. Um, I might share a few things that I had just so you guys and the public can um, have some information that I already asked Lynn. Um, so let's see, a couple of things. Well, well, firstly, I wanted to comment that I really liked to see the reference to the master plan in some of the department's goals, specifically the conservation and the planning department, um, really had all their goals tied back to the master plan, which I thought was really great. And what I am hopeful that we'll see going forward, I think we've talked about that a lot, that really the master plan should be driving a lot of the decisions and work, you know, work efforts that, that everyone's taking. So I thought that was, that was great. Um, I wanted to point out, I don't know if, if you guys are looking at the budget and, and had these same questions. I guess I just wanted to share them since I already asked Lynn and got some answers and wanted to um, keep her from having to answer the same questions multiple times. So under, um, under the police, uh, the public safety section in the police um, goals and you'll s there's mention of the fact that there would be a new sergeant and I had asked if there was going to be a financial impact to a new sergeant and Lynn clarified for me that through the, the negotiations on the, con the union contracts they're shifting from an officer to a sergeant so the, he the total headcount of the department won't change and the, the you know financial impact is not large so I just thought that was notable. Um, also in the police accomplishments section, there's some discussion about um, using devices to monitor traffic, which I think was great because we had, this board had asked the police chief to look into different roads that have been, residents have complained about a lot of um, speeding and, and so forth. So I did make a note, um, ask Lynn to ask Chief Gray to come in at some point, maybe closer to the end of the, um, you know, we don't need to do it right away, but yeah. to give us an update as to, you know, what were the results of monitoring that traffic and what um, actions maybe the police has taken given where they found high, you know. Um, and then there was also a, a line item, a financial line item for reserve officers that I was just curious how we're using those reserve officers and that is to try and reduce overtime. So I just thought that was a good use of trying to um, control costs. Um, another item that I had questioned about which I thought was, um, I don't know, unusual I guess would be to have a uniform and clothing budget for departments that didn't seem like they would need a uniform and clothing budget. So I obviously I would expect the, maybe the DPW and clearly the public safety departments to have a uniform budget, but there was uniform budget in other departments as well, which I didn't necessarily think made sense. So I what um, asked if we could look into it. So it is a union item or, you know, in the union contracts, but I think we could we are open to negotiations with those bargaining units that are impacted. So I'm assuming this will be a something that will be addressed during bargaining this round. Yeah. Let's Great. just not roll them into base. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, also, just to point out in the printed version of the plan, the IT department's goals were not 
in there, but they're in the online version. That was just a clarifier in case you were looking for the IT goals. Um, let's see. Obviously, the Mills to Hills thing was something that I was excited about in the budget that was an accomplishment, so that's why we had the presentation tonight. And there was another item in, in the intro of the document. We talk a bit about the fact that there was an increase to our assessment from the GLSD, um, the Greater Lawrence Sanitary District. And I'd ask Lynn if she could get a little bit more information as to why, and she shared with me the fact that the, um, the allocation is subject to the Prop 2.5, so it goes up through that means and as well as through capital projects. So I did ask if we could get a little bit more information on what capital projects they're doing. I think our allocation is less than Lawrence um, would have because of the fact that we don't have the combined um, sewer. And so our water's clean, you know, our, our, we don't commingle. We don't, yeah, water. exactly, we don't commingle. So our allocation is less, but still I'm interested in what capital projects they're doing because it obviously it would impact, you know, for example, if they're doing something to impact the discharge into the Merrimack or something. So I, I just thought that was um, something that was interesting we could get more information on. Well, it's yeah. helpful because every time there's one of those overflows, it's identified as North Andover, and I think a lot of people yeah. both in town and outside of town read that and they think North Andover is doing it. It's just that's where the regional facility is located. But it's not, it, the irony is it's it not being caused by us because we don't commingle that. So right. I, that's a really that's a really interesting question and good, I think, for all the communities to know. Yeah. Good question. And, and also, too, just um, along with the, the water issue is also the air quality issue and odors and things like that. To, if, they were. if that's the things that they're working on, because I'll tell you that would be one that the town would certainly support. Um, That'd be good. Um, and then, let's see, I thought there was one more thing. I just wanna... Oh, and then another item that I just want to call attention to is the net metering credit sales agreement, which brings money into um, North Andover. That's basically a benefit of the Osgood Solar um, project, where we get credits for for that solar in addition in addition to that the, the um, host community agreement. So that's just a great example of the green community um, status and doing something green that's benefiting our town financially. So those are just a few of my comments or things that I discussed with Lynn about that I wanted to share with you. Sorry if I didn't make it clear that I was. Um, but that was what I was hoping to talk about in this part of the meeting. But um, if you guys have any anything else that um, you yeah, want to yeah. share? And I know there was one item that you had question asked me about, which was the project engineer, which oh, yes. is a new, Thank you. new one um, of the ones. position that was recommended in the Public Works Department. And that um, I've gotten a, a job description that was put together when they were discussing that position. Um, and what this position would do is it's going to assist all of the the, the public works and any other co department with any capital project that will be done within the town. Okay, so they'll oversee the project, the construction of the project within, with, keep it within its budget confines based on what was recommended at town meeting. Um, they'll impl implement the schedules, do any notification to abutters and residents as to the timelines of the project, what um, different things will be going on, mm -hmm. um, and they'll report directly to the public works director. Yes, thank you. I, that was that was my number one item. I don't know how I missed that one. Because I think that's given all the construction projects mm -hmm. that we have going on, plus all the things that the state's going to be doing. Not There's going to be so much going on in this town over the next several years. And for me, that's a really critical role. And we have pre-funded that person's OPEB liability. Yes, we have. With, you know, we with a recommendation. That, with the, the recommendation. Budget. So I yeah. noticed that in the OPEB section based yeah, on your thing. feedback in previous meetings. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's going to be a really great addition that will really benefit everyone. Right. And it was one of the initiatives that the board had recommended that they yeah. wanted to see. So um, we've implemented it and recommended it this year. Yeah. Um, 
Anything else related to the budget? So this is a little bit, the town wouldn't vote on this, but is this the appropriate vehicle? We kind of talked about this towards the end of our last meeting, but we have so many revolving accounts. Mm -hmm. And even though the town doesn't, I wouldn't want to confuse things and make people think that we are supposed to be voting at town meeting on those expenditures, but it would be interesting to follow how those revolving accounts what's going in in a given year and what's coming out in a given year. Okay. So is you, this the because we so we've talked about a revolving account, yeah. account for fields for instance. Um, right, exactly. So we and, have the revolving accounts that we vote at town meeting. They're the 53E and a half um, mass general law that have to be monitored in, in that way. And before the mass modernization act went into place, Every year I'd have to report that at town meeting. It would be in the town warrant uh -huh. as a document that told you the previous year's balance activity in and out of that and what you're projecting for the future year. The, the new modernization act has removed that, but it's not preventing me from reporting to the board on a, on a quarterly basis or however, however often you want to know that, what's in and out of those funds. I think, um, I mean, not in the, I don't, you're our babysitter, so that, yeah. it was more just to look back on past years and just mm -hmm. to understand what what accounts exist that are be outside the scope of normal okay so normal on town quarter, business but like that that's a good example of an account the fields account right, where right it's a substantial amount of money coming in it's not a, mm -hmm. a chunk of money that's typically approved by town voters at town meeting it's being used now Correct. to supplement the fields funding the yeah. the field complex funding mm -hmm. but just under normal circumstances accounts like that would be i think interesting to follow and right. and so on a quarterly basis, I do my financial reports, and in that financial report packet is the, the cash balances of all the funds. It's like almost a, a five or six page report that shows okay. you every single fund, capital projects, enterprise funds that would list all of the balances. You can go into more depth because I hide columns in there that give you the beginning balance, the ins and outs, and then the ending balance. So we could, I can provide that information to you on a quarterly basis, which you just, and then you could question one or the other if you needed further information on, on details. Just for knowledge. Just, I just yeah, for the, the knowledge just of it. To, Absolutely. Just, yeah, for the yep. knowledge of it. Yep. So that information can is provided. Yep. I think that makes the, the other thing is that's sort of the parallel to reserve accounts. You know, we have a number of reserve mm -hmm. accounts. Yep. And so it kind of, for the same reason that we like to be able to look at that, yep. um, year in, year out, you can see trends. And, and so I, I think it's the parallel to that very much. And, so it's and the, the festival idea. committee falls yep. under that too, right yes, there. It does. Yep. So in the report that should be attached in your agenda, the financial yep. report. Well, there's, there's a block for it, but not every meeting. It's not hyperlinked every meeting because it's only quarterly okay. that we get it. Yep. So I can make sure that we have that for the next meeting and you can look at that because it has been created through January 31st. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Uh, anything else in terms of budget discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, according to the budget calendar, it says that you'd, you would need to uh, vote and adopt the operating budget today. Oh, okay. Yeah, can we do that with what's been discussed? Can we do that if we don't have it? Today's the 25th, there. right? So it is. Uh, no, we voted we to, vote to move it on. on. No, you moved it. Oh, they did. Okay, so they voted yeah, it. Yeah, we approved lot. it subject okay. to any changes okay. over the next So we did hours. that on yeah, the okay, 11th. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, Sorry. Because, um, yeah. That, is a blur. Yeah. that makes okay. sense. Totally. You're not ready yeah. for this just yet. So. Yeah. So okay. we had, we we did vote to approve it. Okay. Move it on. Subject to, you know, comments for 30 days, and that was in our February 11th meeting. Yep. So our next meeting is March 7th. Is that? Yep. Less well, than 30. No. Days. The next meeting <laughs> is March 11th. March 11th. I mean, oh, sorry. I have a conflict on that date. I brought that up earlier that I won't be available. Um, I'm actually out that entire week. So what day is that, Paul? That's a Monday, but I'm on the No, no, the week. one that we're switching. Is it fall? So not next Monday, the Monday after. Oh, I see. Your oh, yeah, away another week. week. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So March 11th. That might be why you have the 7th down, because that might have been the date that we talked about oh. as being a potential replacement. Uh, right. Because it's okay. that, it's the last full weekday. Oh. Well, so no, I, I was looking at the wrong thing. I don't think... Um, I know you did tell me that, Dick, but I don't think I put a new date out there for people. So you're out the whole week? Yes. Which would then, the 11th act is the 30th day, so we'd want to meet the week before. Which is 
Which, that's next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's next week. Right. Um, we need to look at the calendar for the town manager selection, like make sure we don't. Um, I mean, these, we don't have the date set in stone yet for anything, but. Hmm. All right, well, here's the thing. We, uh, we voted to approval to approve it subject to changes that we could, we could make within 30 days. So everyone should come to the next meeting prepared with any changes you want to discuss, basically. Um, and we would have to have that meeting before the 11th. Sorry. Go ahead and. The citizens' petitions, the deadline's the 11th. Mm. For them to submit them, but not for us to accept them. No, so that's why I'm saying if you wanted to have a meeting on following the 18th. But the context of this discussion is, in the, is for the budget. Yeah, so right. we need to meet So that we have any feedback before 30 days. Well, could we, could we have it? Sorry, if I'm. Could we do it the 5th, 6th, or 7th, if not the 4th? Yes, since. No, he, Dick's not there that next week. So these are the days leading up to the week that he'd be gone. But the only thing that has to be on that agenda is any loose ends with the town manager search. But otherwise, it would just be a budget meeting, just to formalize it. So that way, any final feedback you can get. On the seventh, if we will say meet that next week. Yeah. Any of my preference would if my preference would be the seventh. Yes, I mean. I'm, I mean, I would appreciate that. It would give me, a, I wouldn't mm -hmm. miss that meeting. Yeah, but I think we've always, as a board, always tried to accommodate one another. Um, I guess you should put it out there. Any of those days is fine. Um, I don't want anyone to feel boxed in. They have conflicts. It just, the 7th gives us the most time, really, to, unless we want to meet on Friday, the 8th, but I would suggest the 7th gives us the most time between meetings, right? Do you have a conflict that day? No, I just, I, I guess I was, I was hoping to do that in this meeting. So oh. I'm frustrated with myself for not being more clear so that we do didn't we? do this discussion in this meeting. Oh, not not look. setting the date. I'm saying just finalizing the budget but, okay. in this meeting. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean. um, it's okay. So, I mean, I could do, I could do the six or the seventh. It's fine. Um, are we, if we're comfortable with the seventh, can or everyone do the seventh? I can, and I yeah. just was asking Chris because his yeah, schedule is tricky. Yeah. Yeah. No, seventh is good for me. We should go for the seventh. So we're meeting the seventh instead of the eleventh. Yeah. Okay. And it's seventh, which is a Thursday. Thursday. I was going to say, no, can no, you guys? No, is there a room available? Oh. Oh no, CPC meets on the seventh. That's where I got that date. I was looking at their calendar. No, they meet the, yeah, they they meet meet the second. They meet the second Thursday of every month. Okay. But honestly, we no. always they're meeting on the, the seventh. I, I looked at it. Overrides the other boards. Yeah, but they have to be televised also. They could go to the. They, they also were planning on coming to your meeting on the eleventh to present their recommendations. Oh, so, too far. Um, um, I think we need to discuss the schedule oh, because the because warrant. The warrant has, has to, to be done, and you have to make your recommendations on it by the 25th. So if you're not the, by the 25th of March, right? That's yeah. not typical. Here, it's right here. Yeah, it's not. But that's before we don't ever make our recommendations before the election, do we? Oh, that would be that's unusual. A good point. Well, you actually usually don't have a meeting on that Monday. You have it on Wednesday. Yeah. So. No, 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 that's not, we, we do the swearing in on the Wednesdays, but we don't, we don't have the meeting the Wednesday after town elections. Yeah, no. We normally meet, because I'm just thinking of my own personal experience when I, it was either my first or second meeting where I had to provide recommendations in April. Right, and but, that was but <laughs> the calendar's done so that we can get it to the printer in time. Right. I think one year it was a week later than normally, maybe your first year. I 
Well, I mean, well, if you want to keep the meeting on the 11th, then I can provide feedback um, independently to the chair on the budget prior to the 11th, and you know that can be brought into the meeting. I, I would, you know, I would respect the chair to bring that into the meeting, um, and then so if you want to keep it on the 11th, I would just be absent from that meeting. Or you could just add a meeting on the 18th, in addition to the. Oh so well, the, we can't. Well, the point is to try and accommodate him for the budget. No, I said in addition. I'm saying if so you wanted to meet on the 7th or whatever, the seventh and the 18th. Move, your, move your meetings from oh. the week of the 4th and move them to the week of the 4th and the 18th instead of the 11th and the 25th. And mm. you could have your, um, I think they well, it would be a week early to do your, your warrant recommendations. <laughs> I, mean, I would want to give you the opportunity to, to be here, Dick. I mean, just. It's nice you, you could submit, but I, I think being in person. I agree. I think so we all should try to accommodate one another. Yeah, I'm okay. All right, seventh and the eighteenth. So okay. the seventh and the eighteenth. Yeah. Okay. And if we don't have this meeting room because the CPC so is meeting, maybe we can get the school so, admin. Yeah. School yeah. Or the senior center. Uh, the chair. Yes. On the eleventh, the board of select would have to vote to close the warrant out the warrant Certainly. for the annual town meeting, and it's it's statute by char our charter mm. and that's why we picked the 11th because that's within the date the time frame mm. that you need to have it done by so what and we can't go beyond that date so you're saying mm -hmm. we have to do that on the 7th so we're gonna have to do it on the 7th the the right right so the same can. date citizen pe pe petitions and the, the closing of the warrant are all on the 11th but can you dial in <laughs> is that, that possible that. can we do that we do allow it um, I could try to dial in I'm going to be in North Carolina, but I can try to dial in. Is that allowed? It has to be at least 40. It's got to be at least 40 days. Before. Before. School committee members right. do it all the time. And I think I backed into that number that day. Although we don't have my so. days. We can put you up on this screen, Dick. Oh, my God. <laughs> we can, yeah. The great, <laughs> powerful Oz. It would be like, wait. <laughs> he is the IT guy. Uh, <laughs> we could, I could do that. Yeah, I'm just checking the, the dates. Isn't it the board? It's not a. No, we voted to allow that. I, okay, we just never did it. No, we've never the done school, it. The school, school committee to allow it for the school committee. Right. Um. So there, there is time. I mean, there is. We do. We, we have wiggle room in there. At least forty. Yeah. The problem is getting it to the printer. And getting in the problem, time. So it's just a matter. Of so we can move it to the 18th then. Well, let's. So what are we doing? <laughs> All right, so I, per I, I personally think we should leave it the 11th and see if um, Dick can dial in. I'm sorry, Dick, but it seems like it's... Okay, so we're at the 11th. I mean, if the citizen petition article have to be in on the 11th and we have to close the warrant on the 11th, it sort of feels like we don't have a choice. We can't close the warrant on the 7th if the citizen petitions aren't in, so... That's fine. Let's do it on the 11th, and I'll, I'll try to dial in. We we'll just let's get Chris on Chris call, yeah. so we know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Sorry about that, Dick. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Um, Thankfully, we have technology that we can overcome distance. All right. So, do we have any other meetings after the 11th? All this discussion that we need to have. 25th, what? just the regular. Time. Okay, it's the Back 20 regular schedule. schedule. What date? Yeah. Just to clarify, what date? March 14th is town meeting? Yes. May 14th. May 14th, May. I'm sorry. May right here. These are the dates. So doesn't that. So we have. We, we don't have to close it on, on right, the 11th. But you understand then, right? we have to have time to get it to the printer and everything as well. So we but, can't but the statute doesn't require it. Do we. Would we yeah, 40, between 40 and 30. So I think that that's the 75th day. So we could we do we do have a window. I just didn't want us just double. I just didn't want us to right. think that it was as restrictive as we first thought. Um, I think if we keep it on the 11th, it eliminates a lot of complexity because <clears throat> then we can keep the other meeting on the um, on the 25th, and we're good to go. Right. 
I think so, even though I know it's problematic for you. Figure it out. Which I don't want to. What, what's the lead time for predictions? Can I just ask, because I'm a little confused, which is very easy to confuse me. This is only if you're going to change the town manager's recommended budget. That's why you want to do it, right? It has nothing to do with the warrant. I'm just, I want to make sure I have every, all the paperwork and what we're supposed to be doing. Yes, this, so this is, we're discussing. So this is just if you. If anyone you wants to make, a change, you want to make a change to the budget, the budget. Okay. Right. this is their chance. What's the, lead time that you, what's the lead time that you need to print the warrants for you? Um, well, right now we were supposed, we're required to distribute by April 22nd, so we usually need to get it there like at least two weeks before. Okay. So, we don't need to make this decision exactly tonight, right? We can maybe take some time to look at the, the calendars and see when um, everything needs to right, be done by and everything. The recommendations, um, all maybe we can like give it a day and try to this, see this if the dates perfect. are flexible. If not, we keep it on the 11th. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we need to keep this meeting going for the meeting. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to put Laurie on the spot either on what, you know, what right. the no, dates you can need to be. You can certainly change the meeting date. It's that's fine. We just need to be able to have time to be to get the CPC in to give their recommendations, and you need a meeting to do your recommendations on the warrant. But I thought the 11th was statute. Statute we needed to it's do. The, it's it's, the, it's between 40 and 75 days. So no per, no later day. than 40, but no earlier than 70 days before town meeting. You have to close it. So. But you typically will open and close it a couple times anyway. But like the drop dead date is um, April 5th is as soon as I get the finance committee report, you know, their letter, it goes right to the printer that Friday so that we can get it back in time to distribute because we have to distribute it no later than April 22nd. Okay, we're, ten, we're we're leaving the date for now. We're gonna see if we can do we're something. Leaving it March 11th. For now. Yeah, okay. I think that's what I've heard. Okay, I have no idea where we are. <laughs> okay, um, so that's it on the budget. So now m moving on to town manager's report. We have the standard set of reports. I don't know if anyone has any questions for Lynn. Okay. Um, moving on to selectman updates. Does anyone have any updates to share? Um, if not, I will share that I, I did spend some time talking with Megan and Dee and Lynn and <laughs> Andrew before he left <laughs> a group um, about the master plan implementation committee because we have talked about that in past meetings. Um, and we really started getting, we, we were kind of brainstorming what would the charge of the committee be, how many people, just some initial thoughts so that I could propose something to the group to discuss. And it kind of became clear to me that we need to, and, and I think Andrew had mentioned this actually before the gas crisis, I think was the last time we really talked about it at length. Um, we, and Megan took this action to take the, all the action items from the um, master plan, sort of the master Excel sheet of stuff, if you will, and map to that the department that is primarily overseeing that, that item or would be responsible for that item, the other interested stakeholders to that item, and the priority of the item, whether that's something we can do in the long term or short term, whatever. And then we can look at that and decide and discuss what makes the most sense for really overseeing this. Because when I started looking at the items again, it was seemed to me that all these items really, most of the items are the responsibility of the department, like 
planning, a lot of items are zoning, for example, so the planning department would be responsible for that. So what is the implementation committee really going to do? And I think that's a discussion for us to have, but I think it's going to be a more meaningful discussion if we have this sort of master spreadsheet in front of us so we can see like the number of items and how many per department, which ones don't have a department that are just out there because those are ones that maybe would be more needing a committee to shepherd them through and so on. So I just wanted to let you know because I know some of us have had conversations about this over individual conversations over the last couple of months. So I just wanted to let everyone know that we've talked about it. Megan's taking some action to help us. I think in shortly, I will hopefully have this on a future agenda to talk about this committee. Um, so that's one thing. And then I just wanted to mention that we went to the um, I'm totally blanking on what the event was. The um, the set public clubs. safety exchange the club. club. Thank you. I couldn't remember the name of the, <laughs> the exchange clubs um, public safety awards event. The entire board went to that event recently, um, where the North Andover police officer William Gordon was awarded um, police officer of the year, and firefighter Jeff Crosby was awarded firefighter of the year um, for their great efforts um, as part of our public safety department. I just wanted to recognize them and thank them for their efforts. Um, it's very much appreciated and recognized. So those are the only comments I have. Anything else? Okay. Do I have a